single-cell protein refers to edible unicellular microorganisms. The biomass or protein extract from pure or mixed cultures of algae, yeasts, fungi or bacteria may be used as an ingredient or a substitute for protein-rich foods, and is suitable for human consumption or as animal feeds. Whereas industrial agriculture is marked by a high water footprint, high land use, biodiversity destruction, general environmental degradation and contributes to climate change by emission of a third of all greenhouse gases, production of SCP does not necessarily exhibit any of these serious drawbacks. As of today, SCP is commonly grown on agricultural waste products, and as such inherits the ecological footprint and water footprint of industrial agriculture. However, SCP may also be produced entirely independent of agricultural waste products through autotrophic growth. Thanks to the high diversity of microbial metabolism, autotrophic SCP provides several different modes of growth, versatile options of nutrients recycling, and a substantially increased efficiency compared to crops. With the world population reaching 9 billion by 2050, there is strong evidence that agriculture will not be able to meet demand and that there is serious risk of food shortage. Autotrophic SCP represents options of fail-safe mass food production which can produce food reliably even under harsh climate conditions. History In 1781, processes for preparing highly concentrated forms of yeast were established. Research on single-cell protein technology started a century ago when Max Delber won quarter CK and his colleagues found out the high value of surplus brewery Euro unregistered trademark S yeast as a feeding supplement for animals. During World War I and World War II, yeast SCP was employed on a large scale in Germany to counteract food shortages during the war. Inventions for SCP production often represented milestones for biotechnology in general, for example, in 1919, Zark in Denmark and Hayduck in Germany invented a method named, a Euro OE Zula for Farina Euro, in which sugar solution was fed continuously to an aerated suspension of yeast instead of adding yeast to diluted sugar solution once. In post-war period, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations emphasized on hunger and malnutrition problems of the world in 1960 and introduced the concept of protein gap showing that 25% of the world population had a deficiency of protein intake in their diet. It was also feared that agricultural production would fail to meet the increasing demands of food by humanity. By the mid-60 Euro unregistered trademark S, almost quarter of a million tons of food yeast were being produced in different parts of the world and Soviet Union alone produced some 900,000 tons by 1970 of food and fodder yeast. In the 1960s, researchers at British Petroleum developed what they called proteins from oil processor technology for producing single-cell protein by yeast fed by waxy end paraffins, a by-product of oil refineries. Initial research work was done by Alfred Champagnat at BP's Lavera oil refinery in France. A small pilot plant there started operations in March in 1963, and the same construction of the second pilot plant at Granger Methoil Refinery in Britain, was authorized. The term SCP was coined in 1966 by Carol L. Wilson of MIT. The food from oil idea became quite popular by the 1970s, with Champagnat being awarded the UNESCO Science Prize in 1976, and paraffin-fed yeast facilities being built in a number of countries. The primary use of the product was as poultry and cattle feed. The Soviets were particularly enthusiastic, opening large BVK plants next to their oil refineries in KSTOVO and Karishi. The Soviet Ministry of Microbiological Industry had eight plants of this kind by 1989. However, due to concerns of toxicity of alkanes in SCP and pressured by the environmentalist movements, the government decided to close them down, or convert to some other microbiological processes. Production process Single-cell proteins develop when microbes ferment waste materials. The problem with extracting single-cell proteins from the wastes is the dilution and cost. They are found in very low concentrations, usually less than 5%. Engineers have developed ways to increase the concentrations including centrifugation, flotation, precipitation, coagulation, and filtration, 
or the use of semi-permeable membranes. The single-cell protein must be dehydrated to approximately 10% moisture content and or acidified to aid in storage and prevent spoilage. The methods to increase the concentrations to adequate levels in the dewatering process require equipment that is expensive and not always suitable for small-scale operations. It is economically prudent to feed the product locally and soon after it is produced. Microorganisms, microbes employed include, yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Pichia pastoris, Candida utilis, Torolopsis, Getrichium candidum. Fungi, Aspergillus aurisi, Fusarium venenatum, Sclerotium rulfsir, Polyporus, Trichodema, Cytolidium acidophilum. Bacteria, Spirulina, Hodobacter capsulatus. Algae, Chlorella. Advantages Large-scale production of microbial biomass has many advantages over the traditional methods for producing proteins for food or feed. Microorganisms have a much higher growth rate. This also allows to select the strains with high yield and good nutritional composition quickly and easily compared to breeding. Whereas large parts of the crop, such as stems, leaves and roots are not edible, single-cell microorganisms can be used entirely. Whereas parts of the edible fraction of crops contains is undigestible, many microorganisms are digestible at a much higher fraction. Microorganisms usually have a much higher protein content of 30 a euro 70% in the dry mass than vegetables or grains. The amino acid profiles of many SCP microorganisms often have excellent nutritional quality, comparable to a hen's egg. Some microorganisms can build vitamins and nutrients which eukaryotic organisms such as plants cannot produce or not produce in significant amounts, including vitamin B12. Microorganisms can utilize a broad spectrum of raw materials as carbon sources including alkanes, methanol, methane, ethanol and sugars. What was considered waste product often can be reclaimed as nutrients and support growth of edible microorganisms. Like plants, Autotrophic microorganisms are capable to grow on CO2. Some of them, such as bacteria with the Wood-Jungdahl pathway or the reductive TCA can fix CO2 between 2 to 3, up to 10 times more efficiently than plants when also considering the effects of photoinhibition. Some bacteria, such as several homocetogenic clostridia are capable to perform Singer's fermentation. This means they can metabolize synthesis gas, a gas mixture of CO, H2 and CO2 that can be made by gasification of residual intractable bio-waste such as lignocellulose. Some bacteria are diazotrophic, that is they can fix N2 from the air and are thus independent of chemical N fertilizer, whose production, utilization and degradation causes tremendous harm to the environment, deteriorates public health, and fosters climate change. Many bacteria can utilize H2 for energy supply, using enzymes called hydrogenases. Whereas hydrogenases are normally highly O2 sensitive, some bacteria are capable of performing O2 dependent respiration of H2. This feature allows autotrophic bacteria to grow on CO2 without light at a fast growth rate. Since H2 can be made efficiently by water electrolysis, in a manner of speaking, those bacteria can be powered by electricity. Microbial biomass production is independent of seasonal and climatic variations, and can be easily shielded from extreme weather events that are expected to cause crop failures with the ongoing climate change. Light-independent microorganisms such as yeasts can continue to grow at night. Cultivation of microorganisms generally has a much lower water footprint than agricultural food production. Whereas the global average blue-green water footprint of crops reaches about 1800 litres per kg crop due to evaporation, transpiration, drainage and runoff, closed bioreactors producing SCP exhibits none of these causes. Cultivation of microorganisms does not require fertile soil and therefore does not compete with agriculture. Thanks to the low water requirements, SCP cultivation can even be done in dry climates within fertile soil and may provide a means of fail-safe food supply in arid countries. Photosynthetic microorganisms can reach a higher solar energy conversion efficiency than plants, because in photobioreactors supply of water, 
CO2 and a balanced light distribution can be tightly controlled. Unlike agricultural products which are processed towards a desired quality, it is easier with microorganisms to direct production towards a desired quality. Instead of extracting amino acids from soybeans and throwing away half of the plant body in the process, microorganisms can be genetically modified to overproduce or even secrete a particular amino acid. However, in order to keep a good consumer acceptance, it is usually easier to obtain similar results by screening for microorganisms which already have the desired trait or train them via selective adaptation. Disadvantages Although SCP shows very attractive features as a nutrient for humans, however there are some problems that deter its adoption on global basis. Fast-growing microorganisms such as bacteria and yeast tend to have a high concentration of nucleic acid, notably RNA. Levels of must be limited in the diets of monogastric animals too. 